Hey guys and girls, Wildlife Documentary here, and this video is part 3 of my Camera Gear for Wildlife video series. Today I will talk about possible improvements to my gear that I know about. You see, the gear I'm using is by far not the high-end enthusiast gear you could get for tens of thousands of euros or dollars. But if you are considering semi-professional filming gear, I have a few tips to offer, although I'm constantly finding out about new kinds of gear and solutions to the problems I'm facing. So this will probably not be the last video I will make about this topic. Also, as I do not own those possible improvements yet, I'm basing my information on my research and partly my speculations, but I will tell you if I'm not certain. Alright, so let's do this. Perhaps the most dramatic improvement I could make to my setup is changing the tripod head. And here I would like to thank Alan Orlander, who left a good tip down in the comments. I'm using a big and sturdy ball head from Rolay, the T7S Mark II. And big and sturdy is what you want for a heavy camera gear like mine. However, I'm mainly filming wildlife and not taking pictures. A ball head is good for photography, whereas a video head is much more suited for video. Why is that exactly? Well, video heads typically have fluid resistance inside them, which ensures smooth panning motions, or at least makes those much more achievable. And for professional looking video, this is absolutely necessary. Ball heads can be loosened, but although the camera's weight partly rests on the ball head, your hands are responsible for keeping the camera steady. A video head helps tremendously with this. Another problem is that if you tilt your camera upwards, you offset the center of gravity away from the ball head and, instead, you will have to hold the weight of the camera yourself. Often, quality video heads have a function for balancing out the weight, so the video head will keep the camera steady and carry the weight even under such conditions. Another possible solution would be a gimbal head, but this is not as suitable for video as a video head, as far as I know. However, why will I probably not buy a video head anytime soon? Well, first of all, professional video heads that can carry the weight of the telephoto camera gear are quite expensive, such as the Manfrotto 502 fluid video head which is maybe just sturdy enough for my gear, but I'm not sure about that. The second reason is that my tripod itself is not sturdy enough for my camera gear. I'm using the Rolay C5i carbon fiber tripod, which is not made for that kind of weight. It bends and has quite a bit of leeway when fully extended. What's even more, I have a tripod extension tube attached to the central bar of the tripod, so it is even worse. That means that if I were to buy a video head, I would not experience the benefits of the smoothness of the video head, at least not all of it, as the tripod will move and bend. I do not feel this so much with my ball head now, but I would need to upgrade both the tripod and the tripod head to professional ones for heavy weight. As I already have a tripod and a ball head, I'm not yet ready to spend so much money for upgrades. If you are looking for a tripod or tripod head though, I would highly recommend you to consider these problems. Ok, so this would improve my experiences and the resulting footage. What else? The camera is quite good, the lens is quite sharp and has a wide range. For birds, I would wish for more range sometimes, so a quality teleconverter, such as the Nikon 1.4X teleconverter for F-mount lenses, would do the job, but a 200-600mm telelens is planned by Nikon, with a set mount, for someone in the near future. The preamp and the mic I am using are awesome. One thing I recently changed about my audio setup though, is the dead cat or windshield I was using on the mic to protect it from the loud effects of wind. I used the Rode Deadcat Fairy windshield along with the standard foam windshield that came with the mic. They did not perform very well though. I recently switched to the Rycote SGM foam and wind chamber combination. 
the one for up to 15 cm, and right away it proved to be much more effective against wind noise. I will play a test recording comparing the two windshield solutions. This is not a scientific test by any means, as I just blew air against the mic from short distances and with different intensities with my mouth. So as you can see, the effects are quite strong and noticeable. There are also the softies and super softies from Rycode, which will most certainly do an even better job considering their price. Alright, so this is it for this video. I hope those tips helped you and if you have questions, simply ask down in the comments. So see you in the next one.